you know, if I were to title this training, it would be to control the meeting. You know, I really think when we control the meeting, we're basically we're not letting the client dictate things to us. We're not in that spot where the client is is basically pushing us or rushing us or trying to get through the meeting, whether they're in a hurry or whether it's legitimate or not, um, or whether it's something that totally um, they just they don't really want us in their house. Whatever that is, hey, at this at the point that we're in the house. And we're there. You just realize, number one, they sent this in. They mailed this. So it's on them. And so if they're trying to rush us out now, hey, that – and, again, sometimes you can depict. But, like, 10% of the time you can decide if it's, if it's really legit or not. But really 90% of the time, stay in control. Run the show. Because, again, just like you or I, if anyone were to interrupt us from our favorite TV show or, or whatever it is we might run in, and just even the normal, normal season of our routine, we might be a little ruffled at first if – but once we like that person and we change up and we realize our routine has been moved and adjusted, you know, most of us do adapt to that. And we're, we're very comfortable with that. So make sure um, and realize that that's okay to go ahead and to be comfortable with those things. Once that we've, we push through it. Um, this particular gentleman in sharing a case study with you guys, he had just gotten laid off and he was a union guy. And again, you know, this is in the, the times we're in now with this Corona COVID-19 thing, a lot of temporary layoffs, hopefully, um, if he will be back to work here. Um, but this particular guy, he was trying to file for his, he just got laid off the, uh, the Friday before and he was trying to get his unemployment filed. So I knew he had a solid income and everything. Um, but he was literally trying to get through the unemployment office. And right now, I mean, those, those phone lines are just busy. Their, the reps are tied up. The hold times are astounding. And so he was really kind of, and he had his daughter over there trying to help him. And so he was you can obviously, just from me laying it out, you can tell he was probably pretty darn preoccupied and he didn't really want to talk about his life insurance. And so I just kept going through it. I controlled the meeting. I went through the presentation. I did have to shorten the warm-up just a touch because I could tell he was disinterested. Um, and like I said, he was pretty preoccupied with wanting to call for his unemployment, but I, I maintained I wanted to control the meeting. I wasn't going to let him control the meeting on me, even though in my heart I was kind of like, well, that probably is pretty important to get his, his unemployment filed so he's got an income. But as I continued to control the meeting, initially he didn't want to get his policies. He said he had some insurance. Even when he found out the card was more about some, some insurance, and he was like, I already got plenty of insurance. And so I did. You know, one of our, you know, basically one of our greats, Bill Ham, has always said, you've got to be able to smell that sale. And I did. I smelled the sale as this guy was, was talking. Even though he was trying to push me out the door, and he was really kind of wanting me to reschedule. But lo and behold, he went down in the basement, got in the filing cabinet, got his policies. And he had four separate policies. So, again, now I know we got a call, and I see several of them with the same company. So I knew we need to make some carrier calls to find out what had happened or, or what's got going on. Um, long story short, the guy had had, um, he had a $20,000 policy that was pretty solid that he bought a few years back, had 2000 of cash in it. Um, he had uh, a policy he bought even before that that had about $800 of cash in it. Um, but then he had two other policies he bought in the last, I think, two and a half years, and they both had, uh, four year waiting periods on him and he was perfectly healthy. And so I knew from there when I, I combined everything, I was going to put him in a better position just because those policies were so expensive. So as we, again, and I could put, feel him rushing me, feel him rushing me. But as I was looking at the charts and the policies before I even called the carriers, I could tell he was going to have about 3000 of cash value. So I started dingling that carrot in front of him or dangling that carrot in front of him so that he would realize that, Hey, this meeting now, this $3,000 is just as important as getting your unemployment filed. And so I found the little crook there to continue getting him to listen up and to, to realize that, hey, if we get this taken care of, and again, it was about 3 o'clock when I got in there, so I knew he wanted to call those offices before 5 p.m., but as, as they continued to just realize I was in control, and if I could dingle or dangle those carrots in front of him, that he would realize this was huge. He was going to get $3,000 cash back, and that's going to be just as important as the money he'd be getting from his unemployment when he gets that through. So long story short, I controlled the meeting. I kept the tempo. Um, I steered him where we needed to go. And, and even though and he was even hesitant about replacing um, the one policy because he had so long, he was, and he really liked the policy. He liked the agent, um, even though the agent was no longer in the business any longer. And so I just kind of, you know, we inched along. We baby stepped along. I controlled the meeting. I got those small agreements with, don't you think this is a good idea? Let's make sure we still at least get you approved. And I just kept in control. I kept in the driver's seat. Um, and then even when he says, I don't know if I want to cancel these other ones, even at the very end, he kept saying that. And then I realized 
his whole objection was he didn't want to draft out of his account the next month. And so we went ahead and called back instead of doing a paper form that we find that we fax in to cancel the draft. We went ahead and did that on by phone. We called the carrier back. So long story short, I sold him uh, 35,000 of coverage for about three, about 200 bucks a month. And end up that's what he wanted to go with. And I still saved him about 30 or 40 bucks a month and he got $3,000 back. So kind of a neat thing where we can combine people's policies, make sure they get the right policies, day one coverage, save them money, and get them cash back. I mean, it was totally, and in this time when he's just gotten laid off. It was a perfect situation, but I think a lot of agents would have got rushed out the door just because simply they would have let the client dictate the meeting. So the summary is stay in control. Don't let the client push you, no matter how important it might seem initially. Like I said, it, it seemed pretty important that he should call the unemployment office. And so I can get that. But at the same token, he's going to have this $3,000 probably well before the unemployment even goes through. So stay in control and uh, use that out in the field. Hey, good morning. Um, sorry, I feel like rushing this morning. Um, no, I think I probably did about eight or nine presentations. Um, I, uh, <clears throat> As far as one of the things that you just mentioned about giving us the the good leads or whatever. Actually, two weeks ago, I had gotten nothing off of my leads. I actually got a referral off of one that I went to see whose friend came and uh, got like $2,500 off of that. So uh, I was, I actually, that's, it's kind of just funny how that works out. But um, as far as going through my leads, they just, they weren't getting me a whole lot. But um Every week's a different week, and <clears throat> this week was a little bit different. So I went and um, had a delivery notice that I went back and saw the beginning of this week. Um, a sweet little older lady. She's about 82 years old. She lived by herself, immaculate, cute little house. And um, I went in, started talking to her, and we had some things in common. So we got you know really good rapport going. And um, come to find out, she had a couple of policies. And I uh, was like, you know, you know, I'd be happy to go over them with you, make sure they're good, you know, all that. And uh, not interested, was not interested at all. Just was like, no, I really don't want to look at those. I don't want to get them out. Blah, blah, blah. I'm thinking to myself, great, you know, all right, we're about to be done here. You know, there's not much else I can do. She looked at me and she's like, well, what, what do you have, though? <laughs> I said, all right, well, I'd be happy to show you, you know, see what you, if you want a little extra coverage, I'd be happy to go over that with you. So, you know, I hate not seeing what she had, but, you know, if that's all I'm going to get, I'll take what I can get. Um, <clears throat> so I went over and wrote her up on a little policy uh, for, I think, an extra $5,000, and that worked out really well. She's a sweetheart. Um, then the next day I had um, Harry riding with me, and we actually um, ran into a gentleman who had a Lincoln Heritage policy. And I said, well, when did he come write this up for you? And he came back like November 30th. The guy came to his house and wrote him up. And unfortunately, he's had a lot of issues. He had a motorcycle accident a few years ago, so he had a traumatic brain injury. Um, he has um, he's had some surgeries and, and things like that. So, um you know, not the easiest person, you know, but I said, you know, we'd be happy. I have, you know, I have products that can cover you and we'll take care of you and all that. And um, he hadn't heard back from the guy. We called Lincoln Heritage. They're like, it's still going to be like a week, week and a half until we come to a decision. I was like, holy cow. You know, I was like, we definitely can find something out way before that. So um, we're able to write him up. He said he possibly is interested in some more coverage um, <clears throat> within the next couple months when he, you know, works out his money and things like that. So we'll see where that goes. Um, but he was, he was a sweet guy. And um, then later that day, Harry and I <clears throat> went out to see uh, a, the sister of a lady that I had written up, um, who she ended up being quite a challenge for me. I, the, actually, her sister, who I originally sat down with, you know, perfectly healthy, you know, in her uh, 69, I think, perfectly healthy. I'm like, yes, I love, you know, I love folks like you. Um, so sat with her, and here um, we get halfway through the question. She says, oh, I was just diagnosed with, you know, hep C. <laughs> oh, my gosh, okay. So, you know, worked through that, and um, 
<clears throat> she said that um, that she just was waiting to start the treatment because of her um, uh, medical insurance and everything, but that was it. And once it was done and she was treated, she'd be good. I actually had to go through and a couple different, um, you know, app processes to figure out who would take her. Um, but that was her sister a couple weeks ago. So I go back to see um, her sister on Tuesday, and she was um, perfectly healthy as well, except for cirrhosis. <laughs> so it was okay. We had to go through just maybe two different carriers, figured out, you know, what would take her and didn't have an issue, got her written up, which was awesome. Um, had to go back there a couple of times and be very persistent with, with getting her to sit down with me. Um, so that was, that was a win. And then uh, by the end of the week, um, just kind of who I talked about on the call last week, I had a family that I ended up writing up at the very end of the day, struck out all day long. Um, I sat with a lady who was, she was quite cynical and didn't really want to um, go over anything. She just had bad things to say about everybody. So unfortunately, I didn't get anywhere with that presentation. But she, um, um, but anyways, went to my appointment that evening and got it done, finished at 930 at night. And sometimes you just got to keep going. <laughs> I got you live, brother. Excellent. A great case study, Mark. It's funny. And, of course, great talk, too, Tone. It's, um, I think this, this crazy times we're in is pretty nuts. Um, totally unprecedented. So we just got to kind of trounce through and see how this is going to work. But um, just day by day almost. Yeah, Mark and I seem to be like twins. I think the day before, we each had a great Western case um, due to some issues. And, and uh, this time, we both had a prosperity case due to some issues, some direct express card issues. But uh, so I'll share a little bit about it, but I'll try not to run too long. Um, you know, what's funny, and, and every situation presents itself in a, a unique way. You know, this coronavirus thing has definitely um, come about in a unique way. It's causing unique situations. And I was talking to a cousin of mine who does a lot of Internet marketing and you know, just marketing in general. And so we were – he was talking about how different things are affected and uh, businesses and people that clients that he's been talking to. And so we actually joked and, and we're, but we're serious. He said, you know, this particular thing, since um, they're de deeming insurance agents and agencies and finance, the financial industry as essential and we're, we're essentially not shut down as brokers and, and agents. Um, we started joking about it. I was like, wow, generally when, you know, cause we know our sale is an emotional sale all along anyway. And so if we can unsettle somebody with that and, and actually disturb them and play on their emotions, you know, to the point where, hey, you need to realize you are going to die at some point. You need to realize that this could be any day. And so we're, we do play on the emotions periodically when we are selling this product. And, you know, so in a unique way, and my, like I said, my, my cousin and I were talking about this, and he said, you know, what's funny is that uh, we don't have to stir that up. There is emotions running wild you know if you just if you've been to the grocery store it's like eerie you know if you've driven down the streets it's, it's like kind of silent out there you know everyone's kind of like the, even with the distancing of who well, i'm not supposed to get too close to you and so there is it's literally and i think most of you would agree with me i mean palatable where you can taste it you can see it and so we don't have to worry about playing on emotions right now and so like i said i know we all got to be careful how we're doing and what we're doing as we go out there but um I think it's kind of a unique, it's almost, if you're selling life insurance at a time when everyone's scared to die, it's kind of like a unique, perfect storm. <laughs> in a funny way, we still have the answer. We've always had the answer to what happens when people pass away, but now it's like we've got this whole other unique thing that society's putting out there 24-7 on every single news channel. So um, just kind of a mindset or mentality of how you look at um, what's going on right now uh, for opportunities. And... Mark Dow and I were joking. I think we were joking with also at Top Golf last week. Um, you know, and, and take this what it what it is. I have not actually used this, but just something we were joking about that I think actually could work uh, to even generate more impetus and someone moving along. But we were joking about, you know, if you're talking to someone and and you need to stir them up a little more about some urgency of why they need to act and get their insurance policy now, is you could literally say this, and this is 100 percent true, is say, look. This policy, the good thing about it, there is no coronavirus exclusion. So if you were to uh, need to, 
get a policy. Now's the time to do it because we don't know if at some point if this coronavirus thing does blow up, they might put coronavirus exclusions in policies. And so just another phrase, you know, to, to use is kind of, like I said, just playing on the emotions, but that's part of what we do in these emotional sales to make this happen, to generate action. Um, but anyway, enough of that coronavirus thing. But my particular case study, um, and I will share actually one last thing on the coronavirus. Just as I was out knocking, I didn't count the doors I knocked on yesterday, um, but I did have two um, two people that were kind of like, hey, this is not a good time. Um, coronavirus, what are come back in a week or two when we know more. So I did actually receive a little bit of that. Um, I didn't know how that's going to spin down. And so, again, my solution would be, hey, let's – and actually this worked with one other lady. I said, let's just sit outside. Let's sit on the porch. Um, so don't be afraid to try that. You know, the weather's almost breaking here in Ohio. It's about 40 degrees today. So as long as you had a jacket on, that should work. Um, but anyway, this particular sale I had was, you know, I'd been knocking. And this was a lead I'd been to before. And I could see literally right when I looked in the door, the husband was asleep on the couch. And so the lady was like, he works third shift. It's just a bad time. So I came back this week. Husband was awake. Um, it was one of those ones that I didn't really want to go back to. Um, from a kind of gets into that prejudging side, you know, where this particular house was you know, a lot of pets and smoke. And it was just one of those ones that, you know, you know, one of the ones I would like to meet out on the porch, actually. And so I was just like, you know, I'm going to stop by one more time, you know, just to see. Turns out these people were literally the lay down sales. And so we got to be careful with that. You know, when we got these people that we want to prejudge and whether it's housing conditions or whether it's their, their lifestyle, these were people were literally, they said right before I tapped on their door, they were just talking about life insurance. And so I literally walked in, it was a total lay down sale. Um, the wife had had some health issues. So we had to go Gerber and the husband, direct express card, just like Mark's situation, was medium healthy, but healthy enough to, you know, f perfect for a level benefit at Prosperity. So boom, we walked through the E app, getting done, knocked out. Um, since it was such a lay down in the house, like I said, the conditions were a little bit poor. I went through pretty quickly. I did do a little bit of rushing. Um, so I was in and out of that door uh, probably 35 minutes, you know, and, and put up eight hundred, eight nine $900 worth of AP, you know, annual premium. So we don't want to prejudge. Um, we need to still get our jobs done. Go back to the places uh, as long as you feel safe and secure. And, and even though, like I said, those, they were literally just talking about life insurance right before I knocked on the door, total lay down sale that I almost didn't go back to just due to the conditions of the place. But take our time. There's a lot of these people. They just need our help. So I'll turn it back to you, Big Tone. Uh, you know, was able to do that in four straight days uh, of just going out and really plugging away. Um, and um, I uh, shared a little bit about what I've seen over time is sometimes necessary uh, for folks who, you know, feel like they don't need insurance. And, um, and uh, what, you know, we, we shared on a call last week about how important it is and, and how Scott has done such a great job in training in Dropbox and Tony and, and others about helping us, you know, take care of objections before they occur. And then sometimes, you know, even during, things will come up. And, and the nature of, um, you know, someone says, well, I have money saved or I have this account or uh, another or my son makes good money or this type of thing. And uh, what has really been working for me is both, and again, always remembering stories trump facts, but a simple phrase that the biggest mistake that many folks make when it comes to their final expenses is that they assume that as today is, so tomorrow shall be. The biggest mistake that so many folks make is as today is, so tomorrow shall be. And, uh, you know, especially men, but even gals, will, you know, say, well, you know, I uh, have this money or have this, you know, family situation or whatever. And, um, you know, I'll talk about my father-in-law who's a World War II Purple Heart Marine, owned a business, had his IRAs, you know, had his annuities and owned, you know, his home and then condo. But mom, she came, you know, my mother-in-law, she came down with uh, Alzheimer's. And over time, there went half of it. And dad, he had Parkinson's. 
and there went the other half. And, you know, I'm so glad we live in a nation that says, you know, we will take care of you when it gets to a certain point, and we're blessed to have that. But I also understand why they say, but, you know, we think it's right to ask you to pay for what you can first. And, and yet all Dad had was that insurance policy to take care of his final expenses. And he was so proud that he did. And, you know, and, and I can you know, tell you countless situations where, you know, today, you know, the son is there, the son-in-law is there, the, the fund is there. But, boy, I've discovered something I'll bet you have too. Life can change a lot in 20 years, in 25 years. And you always kind of estimate what their life expectation will be. And you do it at several levels. Um, and, and so often people come down to realize, and that phrase that we've heard said on the line before, it's so important to have liquidity. It's so important to know that life insurance is not part of your estate that uh, may have to go through probate and you may have relatives even fighting over it or whatever. Life insurance is immediately there. It's not taxable. It's immediately there to take care of these final expenses so nobody's sitting there staring at each other, oh, my gosh, how are we going to pay for these kinds of things? And these things become so important that you can tell stories and wrap it around the fact that why, why this is so important to take care of this and the, and the way that we always say it, you know, there's no amount of money can buy you insurance. Only your age and your health can buy you insurance. You want to lock this in the youngest and healthiest you possibly can. And so many people put this off, and then there's just no way they can possibly afford it. How many people in their 70s and 80s say, man, I wish I did this when I was younger. Man, I wish I did this when I was younger. And, that's the, uh, and I would do this early on when I do the clothes. You know, I talk about, okay, let's say you, know, you do a $70 or $80 program or a $50 or $60 program. Well, the good Lord's going to give you another 25 years. Well, what did 60 bucks pay for 25 years ago? What did 100 bucks pay for 30 years ago? My gosh, I paid 125 bucks for my first car. Uh, not too much before that. I mean, I'd, I'd get you a nice ride in this. That may be the best vehicle in town. So what's 100 bucks going to be 30 years from now when you're the oldest, and most fragile you can possibly be. What? 20 bucks, maybe? Maybe 15, 25 at the most. And to know that's going to stay the same. So when you've painted all these pictures and they see the whole picture, why do you get it now? Why to lock into it when they're at the age and health they can, even though they may not see they need it? These are the kinds of things that in some circumstances are really needed when people really don't think they need final expense. So I hope that helps somebody. Good morning, Tony. You got me? I got you. All right. Well, um, last week started off, uh, you know, better. I spent the whole, all last, you know, the, the weekend from the first week just replaying, you know, every scenario from the first week, learning from my mistakes. You know, I took notes on every house and, you know, went back and studied when I felt that I could have done better on a specific area. So I just, you know, just implemented the training and, and you know, I constantly have to go back to the training and, and just, you know, just uh, get better insight. And the calls from Scott uh, just just helped tremendously, you know, just put it into practice. But I started on uh, Monday, um, you know, went had a great day, went three for three, um, and was able to, you know, close one of the deals that, you know, first week I wouldn't have had if I not had gone back to the training and studied up. And, uh, you know, so I, I was able to get a two for one on Monday and another one on Tuesday, a, a similar situation. You know, I was getting some objections that he's, you know, he's got insurance he's taken care of. And, and uh, the first week I had hit that one and I, I dropped the ball and, and didn't close the deal that I felt I could have. And so I didn't want that same mistake to happen. And, you know, I, I also set, you know, I think one of the keys that has always helped me is, you know, setting smart goals, you know, the, the, I don't know if you heard the old acronym, SMART, you know, specific, um, measurable, achievable, uh, realistic, and time-bound. And, you know, I set goals for myself for every day uh, and the week, and, you know, and live and die by it. You know, I mean, if, I'm, if I hadn't hit my goal for the day, uh, which happened on Tuesday, or um, um, Wednesday, I'm sorry, I went 0 for 1, you know, admin day, but, you know, I stayed out there and pushed myself till 8 o'clock at night and, came home knowing that I left it all out in the field, you know, and, and didn't have any regrets at all uh, or, or feel bad about myself because I didn't get a sale, but just went out there on Thursday and pushed it and got three for three again. Um, but I think uh, just staying focused um, and, and implementing what I was taught, 
you know, don't try to uh, change the script because uh, it works, man. You know, just uh, I've even considered after this week, man, bump up my leads a little bit maybe next week. Um, but it, it's been a, man, just a great, great experience. And, and man, it, it's almost like, uh, you know, when I first, uh, you know, came to know the Lord, just got excited and, you know, want to tell everybody, hey, man, I had four people this weekend that just, man, just, uh, just told them about my week and, and they're just so excited and, and ready to jump on board as well. So that's a little bit down the road. I know I still got a lot to learn, but, uh, just excited to, to be part of it. Uh, last week for me, um, was a, was a pretty good week. Actually. Uh, it was kind of like the, like the gentleman just said that was just got, that just got done speaking is that I left it all in the field and uh, had had no regrets by the end of the week. You know what I mean? Sometimes uh, if you've been doing this long enough, you're, you're going to have those moments uh, when, when you walk out of the house and you didn't get the sale and you get in your car and you drive down the road and you, thought, you, know, you, know, and you think to yourself, well, doggone it, if I would have said this or maybe I should have said that, then maybe I would have got the sale. You know what I mean? I didn't have any of those, any of those moments last week. Uh, I think for the whole week there were probably two sales that I did not get. And uh, in both cases, I know that I did everything that I could uh, to, 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 to see how I could help those people, you know, calling uh, companies and checking the policies they did have. Uh, and in both cases, uh, what they had uh, was really good and good shape. And for their age and their health, there, there was no way for me to do better for them than what they all, all already had. So I had to pack up and uh, and uh, walk, walk, walk away from both of those deals. And I think um, once you get more more experience in this, then then you'll have have more weeks like that. Um, last week uh, was six six sales. Uh, I think out of the uh, six that I did, only only one was a replacement. Um, I, I had a gentleman that I that I uh, sat sat with. Um, had just done a, a banker's life about three months ago, and uh, he had a term before that, I think it was, and he wanted to upgrade the whole life, so he got with, with, with some ba- banker's life person, and um, they wound up putting him in a graded policy. I, I, you know, he had like like 30% the first year, 50% the second year, and 100 the uh, third year, but he'd only had it for three months, so he was still up, still up to 30%. And uh, after going over his health and his medications, I realized that he qualified for day one coverage for Transamerica uh, and for the exact same money that he was paying for what would have been a 10000 eventually, uh, got, got him fi- uh, fi- 15000 of immediate day, day one coverage. Uh, and then um, I think uh, the capstone for the week was on Friday. Uh, met met with, with a lady at a Tim Hortons. Uh, she was a truck driver. And uh, kind of, you know, she had a really wonky schedule, but she just happened to be off on Friday. And uh, that one was was actually really a pretty easy sale. It didn't really there, you know, there there was no real objection except for I want to think about it. And I think that was probably the the main objection that I got between all the sales that I did was people wanted to think about it. And uh, I think it was the warthog who had come up with that. Uh, well, you, well, well, you know, I'm only authorized to come out here one one time and go over this with you. And that seemed to work just about every time. You know what I mean? Just to let them know that I'm not there to waste their time or, or mine. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, left the field kind of early on Friday when I made, when, when I made my sale. I, I had some stuff to do with, with my son. But, uh, you know, the key was just to stay diligent. You know, not, not every day is uh, sunshine and rainbows. You just got, got, got to get out there and be willing to uh, take those hits. You know what I'm saying, Tony? Uh, and that was the sum of my week, bro. Hey, good morning. Um, yeah, last week I just for one thing be successful. Yeah, I, I know you preach leads all the time, and and that's you're completely right about that. I started the week with 24 um, brand new leads. I was coming off a partial work week the week before. And I apologize, I'm a little bit under weather myself, so um, might seem a little hoarse today. But I'm pushing through as I get to work, and uh, but anyway. Uh, started the week with 24 brand new leads, and Monday, you know, like, like you talk about keeping a positive mindset. I went left the house with a, with a positive mindset. First door I went to, basically got slammed in my face. 
but I kept on going, kept my positive mindset, and and came across a couple cases last week that really I, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm actually positive I wouldn't have got probably three or four months ago, and and just went through. I you know the first house the sec- after I left that house was a, a guy who basically just said, "Hey, you know, this has already been taken care of." I said, oh, great. Well, you know, how long ago did you get all this taken care of? He said, well, she just left 20 minutes ago. Well, three or four months ago, I, I can't say I would have known what to do or what to say, but listening to the call every morning, getting the training that I've gotten, I said, well, that's great. It's just my job to make sure that yeah, everything's done correctly and and that, you know, all the T's are crossed and I's dotted. And then he said, well, come on in. We'll end up the agent that had just left actually kind of messed the guy up and gave some misinformation. I was able to call the company and get everything straightened out. And that's a deal that I probably wouldn't have gotten a few months ago. Uh, went through, you know, Monday. Monday was actually a really good day. Ended up with right at 4000 I think 3900 in sales on Monday. And was just hyped to, to continue my week. Uh, you know, Tuesday went back out. Got a couple of deals done. Uh, you know, it was... It was a week full of ups and downs, really. You know, you have some where you come across where it's like, yeah, come on in, sell me some insurance. And it's some to, you know, some that you have to work on. You have to go through, you know, some objections. You have to get make things a little bit uncomfortable in the house. You have to be okay with that. I, I told you earlier you talked about what's the secret sauce to be successful. Uh, one of my one of my things is I'm I'm willing for it to get a little bit uncomfortable in the house and. I have an unwillingness to lose control while I'm inside the house. Um, finished the week up. I, you know, I was right near right near um, where I wanted to be to hit the 10,000 mark. I came across a guy, another case uh, study that I wouldn't have gotten, you know, a few months ago, but I pushed through and got it just from using stuff I've heard on the call. You had a guy, he had a $200,000 basically annuity in force with a death benefit. So he's like, man, I got everything taken care of. I got a death benefit. Here's my paperwork. I said, that's great. You know, and I went through and assuming, assuming he's going to buy, assuming he's going to buy. No matter what he had, I was just assuming he's going to buy. And I projected that. You know, I said, well, that's great, man. You're doing the right, the right thing here by going ahead and you got this taken care of. Now let's get your funeral policy taken care of. Let's get your final expense policy taken care of. And just went through the presentation and showed him the quotes, and he picked one and was able to close it. You know, I, without the training that we, the support we get here, I feel like I probably, or most agents probably wouldn't have pushed on through and got that done. Um, at the end of the week, it was uh, right near 10000 I actually followed up with a lady that told me to follow up. You know, we got it at the end of the year. <coughs> Excuse me. At the end of the year, you know, we always heard that objection. Uh, get with me in the first year. Get with me in the first year. Well, lady, basically, I just called this lady up. They told me that in December. I said, hey, we need to get this done. You know, let's stop procrastinating on this. It's the first year. You know, we both know you need the insurance. She said, okay, well, let's go ahead and take care of it. That's how I was able to hit my goal there uh, towards the end of the week. I love it. I, I tell you, I like what you said about part of the secret sauce is your willingness to get a little uncomfortable <laughs> and just, you know, the agents I've seen who tend to struggle, they take the no or the, uh, I'm going to have to think about it too seriously. They just accept it. Like, and Ryan's just kind of like, look, we need to do this. You know? <laughs> so guys, take it from Ryan, push it, It's Listen, you're never going to see these people again. I mean, there's possibility. You know, someone, some analytical person is right now like, well, tell them there's a possibility. I get it. But the reality is you're probably never going to see these people again. So if you make it a little uncomfortable, like Mrs. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, you told the last three people the same thing. You need to get this done. You don't have this in place. People are looking to be told what to do. Please write that down. People want to be told what to do. Ryan, you were a former um, law enforcement officer. I mean, how, how often people just take suggestions, kind of being an authority figure. Do you feel like you get that same thing a little bit as an insurance agent where there's some authority there? If you just tell them, hey, here's what you should do, maybe just speak on that briefly. Oh, absolutely. Uh, like you said, these, you know, a lot of, a lot of our clients, they, they want to be led. They need to be led. You know, this is, a, this is something that is, no matter how many agents they've talked to, this is still very confusing for them. But if you go in and you project confidence and – 
you basically tell them this is the way it is, this is why this is the best for you, and, you know, they buy into it as well. Love it. Uh, gosh, what I'm doing, um, standing lead order, getting the 20 leads a week, a lead, uh, following the system. Um, miss it, miss little bits here and there, but to do my best to follow it. And uh, the other big thing, as Scott always says, is just uh, go to work. And uh, that's kind of what, uh, you know, I think folks get into this business and they realize that they can uh, make a whole lot of money in a short amount of time and may not use their time to the best of their abilities. And uh, starting the week off fresh, getting out there early, hitting the doors, and um, doing the delivery notices. And honestly, Tony, I did not get the, uh, get the sale until about 4.30 on a delivery notice. Uh, so it's amazing you follow the system and you go to work and you make money. So uh, that's, uh, that's all Talk I got for right that, now. Yeah. Talk to me about that. How, um, did that. how did that go for you? I would do the delivery notice. Yeah, so tell me about your day. Like you're going through your day. How, you know, for the new agents that haven't used delivery notices before, what's the process look like? Did they call you right back wanting insurance? Did you just run over? What did you do there? How did you get that done? Yeah, uh, throughout the day I'm leaving uh, the delivery notices, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to hit the door one time and, um, you know, leave the notice that time. Um, this one I'd actually circled back. Uh, I think I've been back there twice and hit the same door, then left, uh, then left the notice the other day, and a lady called me back and uh, sent her straight to Sideline, uh, which if you don't know Sideline, hit your manager up about that. Um, went back there. I knew the lady was home. I uh, hit the door, and a uh, real sweet lady, I'll come on in, sent that in not too long ago, have a seat, let's talk, warmed up with her, and a uh, real sweet lady, and um, wrote her up and went from there. Yesterday, you know, I was two for two, had two sales. Um, I was home by dinner time, uh, which is funny. You know, I, I say a short day. I, was, I got home at 6 o'clock. Um, so I don't know what, if that's a short day for the rest of you folks, but a short day for me is getting home at 6 o'clock for dinner because <laughs> uh, I do work the power day schedule. And so usually my days, my three power days, I'm, I'm out till dark and, you know, try to snuggle into a house, right, you know, five minutes till dark, um, which in the summer, you know, that's nine, almost sometimes I'm knocking right just past nine um, to snuggle up into a house. And then, of course, in those days, I get home pretty late. Uh, so don't be afraid to work hard. But um, yesterday, funny enough, the two sales I made, they were, they were folks that um, about a year ago I sat with. And, you know, you, you hear, sometimes you hear folks, that these guys, have, I've been doing this about four years in this final expense and 22 years total. Um, but you'll hear us say, you know, I, I missed that sale early on. And so these were sales I missed um, when I was there a year, year and a half ago. Um, the one guy didn't remember me. The other lady did. Um, but so anyway, I'm, I take that as a challenge when these people send in another lead card, you know, if I get another one, I don't go like, oh man, this is that dumb jerk that's sending another mailer. Um, I'm like, all right, this punk is still shopping. He sent me another one. He's charged me almost $60 now. He's buying a freaking policy. And so first guy, um, no heirs, never married, no kids. And he was in his, uh, I think he was 76. And so, you know, some of those are grumpy people and they just don't give a rip about the world. But this guy had a heart of it last uh, about 10 months ago, and he was on 5,000 meds and bypass, pacemaker, defibrillator, I mean, nitro, uh, isosol, I mean, the whole works. Um, and so knew he was going to be guaranteed insurable. Um, and then anyway, I just kind of, he's going, I'm not paying 150 bucks a month. So I knew he wasn't paying 150 bucks a month. So I just knew I had to come in under that. And so I started pressing, just asking the right questions. You know, what, what could you afford? What were you kind of thinking? Obviously, this is on your, your mind since you've been, you've been thinking about this for some time. And you've, you're basically just asking questions, getting to tell me what his budget is, getting to tell me what he's looking for. Um, and obviously, as long as he doesn't say, I'm looking for a million dollars of coverage for $3 a month, you know, I can kind of work with that and get him in there. And he turned out he already had a plot. So it's like, you know what, you already got a plot. We only need about five to 7000 of coverage for you. And so I just kind of shrunk it and right-sized it for him, got him in there. Um, the other particular lady, just the case study on her was she was um, – she already had some policies. She already had 20,000 coverage, wasn't really replaceable insurance. And I think my mistake is when I was there before was I was trying to wrap it all together, get the whole ball of wax, and she just didn't want to move from those other policies. And so I really realized that she was just so in love with those other policies. 
And so I'm like, you know what? This is just an add-on. If she keeps sending these cards, then she obviously wants more coverage. And again, just asking her questions. What are you looking for? Are you kind of wanting some additional coverage? Leave a little extra behind for the kids, um, the grandkids? And she goes, yeah. She goes, I want cremated, but I want to leave a little extra behind. So boom, there it was. You just listen to her. I asked her, I said, what were you kind of looking to spend? And so just, again, get her to tell me. I'm looking to spend this. And boom, all of a sudden, imagine that. I got a program just for that. So don't be intimidated. Don't be frustrated. Take it as a challenge when they send you these second cards. And if you were out there before, realize what you did wrong and use it and go get the deal this time. You got me, Tom? I got you. Awesome. Well, good morning to everyone out there in NSC. Uh, con- congratulations to Ryan and Tom. Great job. Uh, yesterday uh, was, a, what was a typical NSC day. You know, you just kind of get out there and start rolling th- 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 through, th- through your day and rolling through your deck of cards, you know what I mean? And uh, so yesterday uh, when I got to about my third door knock of the day, I pulled up in front of the house and um, I saw a gentleman walking across the street from one house over into the house that I was getting, getting ready to knock on. And so before he got to the door, uh, you know, I got out and I said his name. He turned around and, and I went and did my door approach there in the front yard. And he was like, yeah, come on in. And um, so we sat down for a while. You know, we, we, we kind of talked for probably a half an hour before we actually got into the presentation. You know, sometimes when we sit with people, they really just want someone to take some time and listen to them and know that they're not just a number uh, or, 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 or just a sale in our eyes. You know what I mean? And so we, we took some time to talk and get to know each other. And it uh, turns out uh, he had some health challenges that he acquired um, during his time serving in the U.S. Navy. And because of those health challenges, he had been disabled uh, since age 37, and he's now 59. And so uh, he had um, about a $5,600 burial policy, um, and then he had a small uh, $5,000 uh, guaranteed issue. So between uh, both of those policies, uh, he was paying about $141 a month, which is really expensive at 49 So um, fortunately for him, uh, none of his medications had changed in the uh, past two years. In fact, he was only on one, and it's been, uh, been, been that way for the last seven years. So uh, we took a look at uh, Great Western and uh, D- D- decided to have him switch jerseys. And uh, so um, uh, to, to reallocate those, those funds that, that he was spending for that 10000 we applied him uh, with Great Western for about 25000 in coverage, and he was very excited about that, which is what, what, what he wanted. He, he, he knew that what he was paying was a lot for what he had, and he wanted the most coverage that, that he, he could get for it. He had no kids, but he had siblings. Um, so, so, so we got him t- uh, taken care of yesterday. Uh, and uh, that was my day, Tony. Back to you. Yesterday, um, I did run into a couple who um, I sat with um, for a while, went through everything, uh, went through my presentation, and he, I mean, they were healthy, they were young. I tried to explain, you know, this is the best time for you to get insurance. You know, you're, you're, your uh, premium's never going to be as low as it is today, those kinds of things. And unfortunately, he had had a bad accident. He had fallen out of a tree a little while ago um, <clears throat> and had multiple surgeries, everything, but obviously wasn't a problem to cover him or anything. Um, and I tried to go as pretty pretty low. Um, they're, unfortunately, they were just living off of just his disability, and neither one of them was working. So figured out kind of quick that that wasn't going to work out and just told them to give me a call. I mean, if they changed their mind, they just, they weren't trying to commit to anything. So got out of there. Um, actually ran into a case yesterday. Um, I went uh, to this home where uh, this older gentleman, he had had a stroke uh, back in like 2000. Um, he's doing really well. He gets around with a walker and everything. Um, his daughter lives with him. She's not working, and um, so she helps to take care of him a little bit. He really doesn't need help, um, but she, you know, just kind of makes sure he's taken care of. But um, come to find out, <clears throat> they um, have t- he had two policies, one with um, Pioneer and one with Lincoln Heritage. And so she was complaining because, oh, well, we just had to send two payments in this month for Pioneer because they said that they didn't get our payment last month. I'm like, you know, did you look at your statement to make sure they're not, like, trying to just take money from you? 
she's like, well, we don't get statements. I was like, all right, so I guess you don't have a bank account. Uh, so I talked to them a little bit. Um, they uh, do have a direct express card, <clears throat> but had no way of checking anything. She said, every time I call, it's automated. You could tell that they weren't technology savvy. Uh, so I said, well, let me look that for you. So before we even got into the insurance, I'm calling their bank, this Co-America, and uh, you know, getting them on the phone, trying to go through their statement, make sure that Pioneer didn't take out extra money. Here they didn't, but I'm not sure why because they it he told us how much money was in there at the time, and they had plenty of money in there. So I'm not sure what happened with it, but we at least checked to make sure that you know her everything was up and up. I think they really appreciated that. So then we were able to kind of move forward. He's like, "Go grab my policies." You know, I want her to look at them. Well, they have him down as graded for. Both of these policies, we ended up calling Lincoln Heritage. They thought they had like $8,000 with Lincoln Heritage. They had $1,000 that he was paying 30 bucks a month for, and uh, he was paying about $130-some dollars for Pioneer. Um, and I said, do you realize these aren't going to actually pay out, and I can work on getting you day one coverage? So <clears throat> they were super appreciative of that. They had no idea that these weren't going to pay. Um, so I ended up you know, looking at Foresters for them, um, but in the meantime, we kind of got into talking about the bank account issue. Well, he didn't have a bank account. His daughter didn't have a bank account. Uh, she really didn't have a car or a driver's license. Her brother will come and, like, take her to the store and things, but they have no way to get anywhere. So um, I said, well, you know, I'd be happy to run you to the bank, you know, help you open up everything. Uh, she said, he's not going to go. He's, you know, I said, well, that's fine. We can open up one for you. And you can just be his payer, you know, and take care of it. Just make sure the money's in there every month. And uh, she said, well, my ID's expired. I don't have a driver's license. I said, all right, well, you have a state ID. She said, it's expired. I said, all right, I guess we're going to the DMV. <laughs> so we go to um, check out everything. I said, well, let's make sure we have everything we need to, at the DMV. I said, I don't mind. You know, I wanted to make sure they're getting taken care of. It's really important for me uh, to help these people. And uh, that's what we do. So I, uh, we go down the list. It's like, oh, well, she needs her Social Security card. All right, do you have that? She wasn't sure exactly where it was. I was like, all right, you know, well, if we have to go to the Social Security office first, I'll take you to the Social Security office. You know, it might take a couple weeks to get this done, but we'll take care of it. Luckily for me, she found her card. <laughs> so that was a really big blessing. Um, that, you know, we could actually get everything done. Um, so she found her card, which was awesome. So we ended up taking a trip to the DMV, uh, got her taken care of, got her a new um, identification card, and went down to the bank, got her signed up, went home, got all the paperwork taken care of. They were ecstatic. I was ecstatic. We were just, it was a long, you know, a little bit of a long, drawn-out process, but it was all worth it in the end, you know helping educate them about everything, getting their, you know, everything straight for them. I said, you know, Direct Express isn't exactly the best way to go. So honestly, if you want to go ahead and every month transfer his money over, that's going to be in your best interest. And so they really appreciated that because when we called their bank, there was actually like 140 bucks that was unaccounted for taken from an ATM. They had no idea what it was for. So I think that helped me kind of compound on how, you know, how – important it was to not use Direct Express if possible. Um, but it was obviously they cared about their payments because they were also behind a little bit apparently on Lincoln Heritage. And she's like, I just sent a money order the other day for all these. And they knew how important it was to not let those slap. So I really wanted to help these folks. And I think they really appreciate it at the end of the day, and they're really sweet. So I'm glad we got to, got to take care of that. <laughs> I, I love it. Well, yesterday was really interesting. I had two just really interesting individuals yesterday. First one I got to, right now I'm working in the area where I went to high school. So pull up to this house. I, I know who lived at that house when I was a kid, but the individual's name on there was a little bit different. Knocked on the door, he came to the door. And turns out the girl that lived there when I was in high school still lives there. That's his wife now. And she was kind of a stoner in high school. I'm not sure what her deal is now. Um, the husband sent it in, but he didn't put the wife on. I'm like, why didn't you put her on here too? Don't you want to get her taken care of? And then she realized what the card is because she remembered him sending it in. She goes, oh, I've already got that taken care of, and she stomps out of the room. So I'm like, great. 
I'm in the door. Now I'm going to get stuck with a one-legger. Can't get her back in there. He's kind of hard of hearing, so the appointment took quite some time. He does read lips. Um, really healthy. He goes, I got all the insurance I could possibly need. And, I said, and we got to the point where we're doing a policy review. And I said, well, let's do this. I said, let's make sure that what you have is what you believe that it is. And in the meantime, his wife, Erin, had already bolted out the door. She had a doctor's appointment. He goes, I don't want to go digging through a whole bunch of boxes for all that stuff. I said, well, are you still paying for it? He goes, yeah. I go, and he goes, take it around my bank. I said, grab your bank statement. I don't get a bank statement. And, and I said, his name's Mark. I said, Mark, at this point, this is not about me and you. And I pointed out the one in the driveway. I said, this is about Aaron. Don't you want to be sure, beyond the shadow of a doubt, if something were to happen to you tomorrow, she's taken care of. And so we kept talking for a little bit. He goes, you know what, let me go upstairs and print off my bank account. <clears throat> and so it turns out, he comes back down, and he has a big stack of all these papers from different insurance companies, and they're completely out of order. So it took me a while to separate those and get them all straightened out. Most of the stuff that he had was an accidental policy. He had one term policy. The term policy at 75, he's 65 now, is going to drop down to half, and then the premiums are going to start going up every five years. And he goes, well, it seems like I'm covered right now. I said, yeah, you're covered right now, but you've already told me that everybody in your family has lived well into their 90s. And that's exactly what you intend on doing. I go, this will be gone, and you'll be uninsurable. Then what? And then so, you know, we start talking about it, explain to him whole life again versus what he has, how nothing changes, gave him the numbers on it. And what I did was at 15000 it puts him right where he's at right now. It, it's never going to change. He picks the twenty. I showed him 25. He goes, no, that's too much. He goes, I, I, I want to do this one. He goes, I, I spent my whole life just kind of half-butt doing things and never really – he goes, you know what? He goes, I, I feel really stupid right now. I said, why? I go, you did exactly what you felt was the right thing to do, and that's commendable. You wanted to make sure that if you passed away, things were taken care of. I said, that's what we're doing right now. We're putting you in something that has guaranteed value. And then the wife comes back, Karen. She's PO'd because she goes, why? I should have been part of this decision too. And he looks right at her and he goes, as soon as he walked in the door, you went to high school with him and you bolted right out of the room. So she's a little, a little testy. She ends up going back in the back room. I finish up with the husband and I go back there to say bye to her. And then we spend another half hour just reminiscing about funny stuff in high school. So kind of warmed up to her. This guy was kind of a, a gypsy, hippie, nomad type dude, and he was a lot of fun. Second guy I get into, almost a carbon copy. And the second guy that, that I'm working with, he just moved back from Florida. He's taking care of his special needs 24-year-old son. Halfway through the presentation, the son just busts out crying, runs and hides behind a chair. Took a while to, you know, to get that situation calmed down. And it got to the point where you know, I've gone through the presentation. We've talked about whole life. You know, and he goes, well, you have my phone number. He goes, just you know, let me know what you can do and give me a call. And as he's saying that, I'm finishing up writing the numbers, and I turn my, my notebook around, and I said, look, this, if, if this is, these are the, the options I have for you. And I just ran right down through the options. He goes, well, you know, I can afford that 10000 right now. He goes, let's do it. So ended up doing two policies yesterday, and, on that second one, at that point, he's trying to usher me out the door, and I just kept going forward and, and put it in front of him, and then he realized that this is really affordable, and that's what we did. Um, I first want to say um, that um, I, um, being new to the insurance game, only a few months in, um, I have to say again, everything that was told to me by my manager, Joe Bobby Gallo, uh, everything, good, bad, and ugly, has had started happening to me. And from Christmas time on, up, up until like a few weeks ago, uh, I hit my first slump. I came in, hit the ground running, you know, making good money, excited, and I hit the slump, 
and I knew, you know, he told me about it. <clears throat> so, but it was very, it was very tough to overcome. And he, you know, he had told me, you know, don't get in your head too much, just keep pushing. And so, I can say to those who are just coming in or thinking about coming in, uh, everything that this company uh, that Tony has set up is absolutely true. And I have to, I keep saying it to everybody that I meet that it's rare that you work for a company that, you know, they tell you the good, bad, and the ugly, but the good, you know, outweighs the bad, and just to stay in it, <clears throat> and everything is true. So I'm, I'm, I'm striving to stay with the, the, the program and, and going with how everything is set up, and it's working for me. So I, I would like to approach it this way, Tony. Um, my case studies for the last week or so um, have been fairly uh, easy, and what I mean by that is is that I'm, I'm finding my rhythm by learning, you know, from you guys on the call and things you all run into. When I hear it again, my mind automatically goes back to what I've heard on the call, and I use it. And so at this point, um, one of the things that, I, that I'm doing that I'm, I'm noticing makes it easy is that um, <clears throat> I, I first, you know, I always state the obvious. I'm a car guy. So I, always, I was taught to state the obvious. Um, you know, I'm telling people stories of, of how insurance works, um, and I'm letting them know that, hey, you know, many people say that, um, you know, I can't afford to have insurance. I don't need any more bills. Um, I, I reverse and I say, listen, folks, you know, we can't afford not to have insurance. This is a gift to our families, you know, so we, we can find a way to make it work. I, you know, it, it's one thing to overcome objections. I think you're stronger when you overcome them in your presentation before they even ask them. So doing this over and over again, day in, day out, you know, different case studies, we know the questions they're going to ask. We know their trepidations. We know their fears. So I included in my, in, in my presentation – I'm going to highlight through telling stories and situations and scenarios, I'm going to address every single objection I've ever heard in a presentation. So by the time I'm, I'm you know, getting ready to have them decide which way they're going to go, they're not asking me any questions. So as I'm doing my presentations and I'm overcoming the objections through my presentations, um, I'm watching their face light up because I know they have these, these, these questions and fears, and I'm just kind of wiping them away as I go. And it's really, really working. I'm finding my groove with that. And, uh, you know, just, just telling the stories. And I also, something that I, I did while I was in the car business, and I, and I do it with this, I let people know how this process is going to go with the presentation. I'm telling them what I'm about to do next. So they're not wondering, oh, he, what is he going to do? He's going to trick me? No, I'm not going to trick you. Here's what we're going to do next. We're going to make the phone call. Here's how the phone call works. Here's what they're going to say to you. Um, and just be prepared how to go through the process. And so I'm finding that, you know, as we narrow it down, I look at it as a funnel. I'm just narrowing the whole process down to, you know, once I write down three numbers or five numbers, I just turn the paper around to them and say, hey, just circle one, which works best for you. They don't have any objections because I've overcome them already. Um, the, one, the couple of things I ran into is, like, some people who don't have their account numbers and they can't get their account numbers. You know, I've heard on the call that some of the guys have actually taken the client to the bank. Well, I did that too. I actually did that this week, and it worked. I got the sale. If I had to left the home and not have done that, I could have missed that money. So, Again, uh, hats off to you, Tony. I appreciate the program. It absolutely works, and I'm just going to keep working the program.